I trust that everyone is having a lovely day and a pleasant evening in the wonderful Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. First world, first world, developed nation where all of our people live in peace and happiness and luxuries abound. The people of Trinidad and Tobago are the happiest people in the world. Here we have no crime. All of our public utilities work in case of emergencies. We have hospitals for everybody. Our education system are putting out some of the brightest children in the world. Jobs are plenty. Nobody suffering. The banks, you have to beg them to take some fees because they're just trying to help everybody. Credit, foreign exchange, you name it, we have it. The price of food, so low, people just feel shame to eat. Tell me, if there's a chance to be who you know. Tell me there's a chance to be that you really know. Because the truth of the matter is, nothing works in the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of the Ochelai clan. Nothing works. And I will admit that I have been fighting hard for my country. I have stood my ground. I have refused to sell out. I did not join up. I did not link up. I have not lied. I did not tell you one thing today and another thing tomorrow. I was consistent in my persistence. And I know all of that because at the end of the day, I took some time this morning to contemplate this particular journey that I find myself on. And I was wondering today, because I, for a minute, I didn't remember the goal. For, for a minute, I didn't remember the mission. And for a minute, I thought, like other politicians, victory is what matters. And I want to tell you, victory is important for you. Victory is not as important for me. I am going to show up and do the same committed job that I have been doing free of charge, out of love of country for all these years. I'm going to continue doing that. But if you want a better country, victory is important to you. Now, you have about 13 more days left and people are going to try to distract you with all manner of nonsense. You're going to have to Take responsibility for the quality of your life from August 15th go forward. We came second in Debe South. And the person who beat us has done nothing for Debe South. And the people of Debe South tell me that. I have gone to see people since. And I just asked, I said, how it worked out? 
because you had a chance with the Progressive Empowerment Party. The difference is the people of Maruga are getting roads, not because it's election time, they were getting roads months ago. The people of Gandhi Village who were crashing and dying, they got protection. They got lights and barrels and rumble strips and signs that you could see because of Philip Edward Alexander, because of my commitment to fix it. The people in the Shagwanas market, when I rest that pre-action protocol let on fight Mohammed, he had no choice but to deliver. They're not getting the Shagwanas market because of anything that the mayor want to do but because we are forcing him and and the people in Debe South has a representative but they might as well not and most of the people including the people of Shagwanas West and Maruga because this woman Michelle Benjamin walking around with one of my former candidates who I understand he catching his ass and they buy that boy out and offer him all kind of thing and he had no choice they send a couple people in the party to look and find who was suffering just to chain them up with money. It's no problem. I wish him well. Go forward. Go forward. He knows at the end of the day he had to take care of himself now and in the future. Progressive Empower the Progressive Empowerment Party is the political movement that has brought the PNM low, not the UNC. The UNC did not do that. While Kamala and her crew were silent and mute. For all these years, it is I, Philip Edward Alexander, and the Progressive Empowerment Party that took the fight to the PNM. It is us in the Progressive Empowerment Party that fought both the PNM and the UNC over the pandemic. And it is us who stood up for people, the public servants. We stood up for everybody. We fought, we fought the vaccine mandate. We created a citizens' union to represent people and got them to keep their jobs. We... Uh, we we were committed to our course of action and we didn't give up when there was a lockdown we were the first people to go live online with our studio we created an online show every day to keep people focused empowered we brought people from all, all, all around the world you all know my brother dr paul Elias alexander and all the people that he brought and then we were giving you so much information that the other side couldn't keep up the other sides they couldn't keep up it is i who pulled low mascara girl and steffi graf and the rest of the bullshit show that keep rowley and terry was trying to sell it is i it is i who told terence the other thing where the second wave supposed to come from terence if we lock down three months now and the airports close where it coming from your mommy and that that stupid statement was a line in the sand that gave all the people in this country who prior to that statement going ridiculously viral, prior to that, people were afraid of what the government could do. And I went and I said that outside the gate to the Prime Minister's house. And I wanted to show Trinidad and Tobago that the power of this nation is vested in the people. And as a representative, of the people I don't care which public servant is sitting on that chair right now they will answer to us and that's what I have been that's what I have been so when I see convenient politricksters jumping out itself and lying to you trying to con you into giving them another job and pretending that they were ever there for you I really had to put people in their place. Now, I want to tell you, it could have get worse. It could have get stink. It could have get nasty. But I'm going to do something, you know. I'm going to give them silence. See where they go. It is I who sat on TV6 with Fazir Mohammed. When TV6 tried to manipulate Fazir Mohammed to, <laughs> but they, it's Philip. How you could call the Prime Minister a jackass? I said to Fazir, a time will come when the entire nation will call that man a jackass. And so said, so done. It is I who told the people through our work in the Progressive Empowerment Party that the government was going to shut Petro Trin down a full two years before it happened. It is I. And we did it. We stood with the people. Not these convenient politricksters 
who just trying to get a work, who linking up out of desperation and convenience. They don't care. They don't care about each other. They don't have an ideology or co a common principle. They just want to link up, distract, and fool you to get a job. When the Progressive Empowerment Party was the party that was doing the job for you, I saw Fazir Mohammed Friday on the avenue with his wife, and they were sitting down having a meal. And they were so elated to see me and to see us. Because the second time I was on Fazir's show, it was different. And he admitted that his entire family were supporters of Philip Edward Alexander and the Progressive Empowerment Party. All of this I say to you tonight, not trying, not trying to, to get you over on my side. Who on my side? On my side already. They can't move you. They have some talking heads. Some, some talking heads on either side. They're trying to say eyes are PNM or eyes are UNC. I will never be one of those parties. And I'll tell you how you could know that for certain. When there was a Section 34 and Keith Rowley sent David Abdullah to beg me to come and march with them because they had a Section 34 march before. And it bus. And the lead voice for civic society, the civil society then was Philip Edward Alexander. And I had a blog called Plain Talk, and we were getting millions of hits to the point where Maxi Coffey hired me to be a columnist for the Mirror, the only columnist in the history of the Mirror that was published in the weekday and the weekend editions. And I'm telling you all of this, not to pat myself on the back, not to boast, just to tell you how hard I've been working for you for free, at my expense, at great cost to myself, at great sacrifice. Chances that I could have had opportunities in this mad country where if you link up, you could get hooked up. And I wanted to stay true. And I want you to hear this, because at the end of the day, you have to make a decision and you have to vote. It'll come down to your choice and you will choose based on what you've experienced and you will choose based on what you know because if you choose on them fooling you then there's nothing i'm going to be able to do for you when there was a section 34 and i realized that the the then unc created a section 34 to free finances who were wanted for stealing over a billion dollars of trinidadian dollars and it wasn't just it wasn't something that you wasn't sure about because Two of the co-conspirators were jailed in America. They were prosecuted in Florida and they were prosecuted and convicted and jailed in America and warrants were issued for senior members of the Trinidad team, including Ish and Steve. And every machination was used in this country to block them. Now, however you feel about that is up to you. If you get cut in the 1.5 billion, brilliant for you. But I agreed to march, and I marched. We printed a shirt, myself, Paul Naus, and a couple of others. We printed a shirt, black shirt with white enough written across the front. And we marched, not as PNM, not as MSJ, or any of the other organizations, OWTU. We marched as ourselves with a shirt saying enough. So every time they show you a picture of me in the front row of that the, uh, of that protest and you see me one seat away from Rowley it is because the PNM wanted me bad they wanted me bad they courted me they loved me and they sent people and who I grew up with the children I could call names but I don't really necessarily need to embarrass people at this point in time but there are people who I grew up with their children and 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 they know that they're gonna send them to talk to me and beg me Philip come on come on boy and I said no and I said no because I spoke to my family and my family said, we're not sure if this is the time for you to be involved in politics or with any political party. And I stayed true to that and I remained by myself and I carried on and I worked hard as an activist. The Jericho Project has done more for so many people than any other activist organization in the country. We've done, we've, we've managed the orphans, the homeless, the disabled quietly for three decades. For three decades, the Jericho Project fed the homeless. We created something called care packages that we would give the homeless and it went global because some, we used to invite people who would donate to the whatever work we're doing, 
You bring your family and bring your kids and let them experience it. And they had this family once about 20 years ago. They came and they brought some kids with them who were staying with their family from abroad. And those kids experienced serving care packages, packing the care packages and serving it to the homeless. And they went back to the States and they did it and it ended up on TV. And they told them about the Jericho Project and the experience they had in Trinidad. And we did that. We've been doing this and I continued. I was a writer, an activist, raising issues in the public space, and I was cool doing that. And then one thing led to another, and I ended up working with Gary Griffith as a communications advisor in 2012. And the UNC tried to get me on board. And they do they all manner of machinations came on board. And, and at that point in time, I said, listen, I'm not interested. They offered me communications minister. In fact, the week Kamala fired Gary. They had leaked into the media that there were going to be changes in the government, in the cabinet, and that Philip Al Edward Alexander was, he had a nod for communication minister. And I said, no, thank you. I am not interested. In 2015, having turned down the PNM, who wanted me to run in Diego Martin Central, and the UNC, who run, wanted me to run in Diego Martin West, I resigned from the Congress of the People, and I ran as an independent. Philip Edward Alexander. All of this you could find. That's my track record. All of it you could find. And that's available to you online because none of it was done in hiding. I chose to go it alone. I have believed then, like I believe now, that the PNM and the UNC are two sides of the same cancer. And I don't care how racist or lazy or foolish you have to be to think that UNC theft is different to PNM theft, or PNM theft is different to UNC theft because of hair texture and skin color. You are an ass if that is what is motivating your politics. You are consigning your children's future to suffering in a land that is in debt to everybody. We are broke, broken, and in debt, and it is going to get worse. You have a chance on August 14th to draw another line in the sand. You have a chance on August 14th because the Progressive Empowerment Party is funded by normal, everyday people. No, I do not want to be a part of the PNM. No, I do not want to be a part of the UNC. No, I am not a political lazy fool that cannot build a party and organize a fight and election. This is my third. And I want you to understand, when I hear all the talking heads talk, I just want to tell them, why not ask Kamala to step out from the UNC and try and do what I do? See if Kamala can build a sweat, much less a party. Try it with Keith. Ask Keith to jump out. Jump out from the PNM, run as an independent. Jump out of the PNM and form a new party. And challenge the PNM and the UNC. And see the underbelly of cult politics. Ask them to try. Because if your leader cannot do what I did, they are not as strong as me. Plain talk and are, are upheld by a cult that upheld Williams, that upheld Manning, that upheld Chambers, is now upholding Rowley, that upheld Pandey, and is now upholding Kamala. But it's just cult politics. It's not about deliverables. You and your family are not benefiting, or if you're benefiting at all, is that corn that Stalin throw for the Federalist chicken. All the pain you're in pain, you're plucking and you're clucking and you're eating. But you're not free. And these people are not serving you. They're owning you. They are serving you up to the contract mafia. I have told you all this. I have shown you. All the ways, and I have educated, empowered, and informed the people of Trent Tobago for years, and I have shown you how it works. I have exposed things in this country, in the education system, the healthcare system, in, in finance, truly. But this, doing this is hard. Doing this, having integrity and ethics in a country that eats its children and kills its own people is hard. It's difficult, but it is better. I watch my people around me and I ask them continuously, do you want 
to be a part of something else because I will negotiate it and I'll get you all on board and I will leave because I don't want it for me but this is not my party alone the progressive empowerment party belongs to all of the people in the party and I give them the option all the time I want to tell you in the lead up to the election many people were coming in that office and we have cameras in the ceiling and we have video footage of all these powerful politicians that came to meet with Philip. We have all those footage and we have it holding. It's there, if ever we need to prove the point, of all of these. You see, you're going to hear next week that a certain media house, a certain journalist, and a certain political leader have gotten pre-action protocol letters and we're taking it all the way into the courts because we're not taking nastiness. And, and those same people are the ones who want to talk about what I say and about them, eh? but they are nasty, nasty players. But you will see for yourself, this is just a local government election. We've won all the wins. We needed to win already. You know. As of tonight, the Progressive Empowerment Party is known to be a fully formed, functional, national party they know us in all corners of trinidad and tobago the progressive empowerment party is a real option and that exists and the general election the next general election is the thing that we want to fight all of this is practice we've won all the wins we want to win coming out of this election here regardless of the results there will only be three political parties national political parties in this country pnm unc pep only three all the others over all the link-ups have to dissolve themselves like the ilp they have to dissolve itself because it's not just jack warner the current leader of the ilp a judge just named them as having be taken taken advantage of a dead man's family and given themselves property that belong to the family and that's the leader of the ILP that's the leader forget about all the bullshit people just want to talk forget about pretending that we love Jack we love Jack hug him up rub his head nice but he did what he did and you could go on Netflix right now and watch FIFA what is uncovered go and watch it go and watch the FBI arresting people Go and hear them boldly call JTA supermarket and Carlton Mac and the millions of dollars that they laundered FIFA money. Go and listen for yourself. I'm not trying to throw Jack under the bus, but I'm just showing you. When Marsha Walker said, well, why stop there? Bring everybody, every community leader, every gang leader, bring every bandit that have a following and let them join the UNC too. Where's the, where's the cutoff? What's the bar? What's the bar? Because you have. Now, and I said to people, people are asking me, why are you not training your guns on the PNM? Because I've trained my guns on the PNM for the past eight years when the UNC was silent. But right now, the UNC is trying to con the people with this stunt game that somehow all of that bacchanal could be changed. And I understand if you're racist, there. I understand it's a racist country. I understand. I understand that Indian people have been told that black people are, the, are their downfall. I understand that black people were told Indian people are their downfall. I get it. That's been put in your head for generations. Your mother, your father, your political leader, your priest, your pundit, everybody who's taking a dollar. I get it. I understand. I feel for you. I understand. But you know what I had to tell my father once? Man to man. Big man thing. I had to tell my father once. At some point, being a grown-up is accepting responsibility for your own life. I told my father this. I said, so when grown-ups tell me that they're not responsible for their lives because of things that happen to them in their lives, I tell them that's hard to swallow. Because at some point, you as a grown-up have to say, okay, these things happened and I want to get beyond them. There are ways and means and tools. We live in the age of information. We live at a time 
where you can access just about anything you want in the palm of your hands, including therapy, including how to fix your own broken mind, including information about stuff that you might believe that you would want to go and check and see if there's something else besides this that was told to you. Put aside cognitive dissonance for a minute and open your mind. The greatest thing that I ever did for myself was to open my mind. When I opened my mind to all the possibilities, I started to see people differently and I started to understand. Human beings are creatures of conditioning. We all end up somewhere in life, the sum total of all the choices that we've made and all the things that have happened to us and the choices that we've made. It's circumstance, it's events that we had no, no control over, but we always had control over how we respond to them. The man, Victor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, wrote of his experience during the Holocaust. And he said they could break my body. They could break me. They could mash me up. But they could never break my mind. And that made a difference to me in my life. Now I know that there is a lot of fear in people's world and it's artificial fear because neither of those political parties have done anything of substance for anybody. You have to tell yourself that if I live in a country that is criminally corrupt and because it is criminally corrupt, you lose out on opportunities, you can't get financing, you can't start a business, you can't get foreign exchange to maintain your own business, customs jamming you and letting somebody else goods pass, Tom and country giving you your information, blanking other people, banks giving loans to some and blanking. In you. You're living in a country that is criminally corrupt where there is an SEA exam where if you're connected or you're bribing, your child could get into a slipstream school they call prestige that could forward them into better jobs than the rest of the schools, even though all of them are doing the same CXC exam in the end, that should all have the same curriculum, that should all have the same books. It doesn't, and that is obvious corruption. If you know that, if you know that the roads are bad in the country because contractors, PNM contractors, UNC contractors, paying kickbacks to ministers for road contracts by the mile and then charging us for full roads and then doing quarter roads and then we have to drive on those bad roads. And if you know that that is because of corruption and if you know that corruption, if you know that under the UNC, $81 million were paid for pipe that could never be used, that we will never use, that is in a Wasa warehouse. But PNM put people in Wasa to pay each other contracts, kickbacks, and bribes to manipulate how the water run in this country. And if you know all of that, PNM and UNC have broken this country by corruption. If you know that, because beyond a shadow of a doubt, Piaco Airport was criminal corruption. Guterres and Hillman went to jail. They had to pay back millions of dollars. Ish and Steve cannot touch down in America. Neither could Jack. How could you have a party where senior members of the party can't travel? Or the FBI could show up at any point in time and pluck them from a state dinner? This is not bullshit. This is true. If you know that your country is corrupt, you know that the government is corrupt and you are looking at your party assemble itself brazenly corrupt to try, try and get office and telling you what? Don't vote, vote. How do you reconcile that any other way than racism? How do you reconcile it? How do you reconcile that? 
Singapore got independence pretty much the same time as us. They have no oil, they have no gas. They are a first world developed nation. They have run out of space. Singapore is a third of the size of Trinidad and Tobago. They have a population of about 5.5 million people. There are about 10 million people trying to migrate to Singapore. Singapore has no crime. Singapore has no pollution. Singapore has no problems because it has a government. This the leader of Dubai told people, it's not about oil, it's not about gas, it's about leadership. When they asked the head of Saudi Arabia, why are you spending all of that money right now? Why are you not doing it over the next 50 years like another country would do? He said, because the other countries are enjoying these things right now. And I want that for my people. What do you compare Trinidad and Tobago to? When you think of your political party, when you think of the PNM and the UNC, and you think of Calder Hart and Johnny O and Ish and Steve and Jack, when you think of those people, that rogues gallery, when you know that Kamala came out of office and the owner of the company that got the contract to build the wastewater treatment plant in Trinidad and Beatum had to run to Panama because they have no extradition treaties. The same way Johnny O'Halloran had to run to Canada with our money. How do you feel knowing that the only difference between the corrupt PNM and the corrupt UNC is race. What do you tell yourself? What? What do you say to yourself as your justification? When Dyer said, when you rationalize, you have to tell yourself rational lies. Tell me tonight. Convert me. Convert me. Facebook. TikTok. My number is 6822110. Send me a WhatsApp tonight. Give me the most rational reason to convert to your side. Show me what your mind says to you. When you think of what Gary said of Kamala, when you think of what Seawall said about the PNM and then went over there and is now a representative, to the PNM people, to watch that man say the stinkiest things about your party and then come across and it's not part of your party. What do you tell yourself? Tell me. Help me understand. Help me understand it. Help me understand UNC supporters who know that every single thing that was written in that release, Kamala and Ratiram put out today, you all have been hearing on this wall for years. How do you feel knowing that your government has to resort, your party has to resort to stealing ideas. The same way the PNM, the last three big ideas that they announced, decentralizing WASA, creating an internal affairs division in the police service and rewarding police with bonuses for performance. Those are all progressive empowerment party ideas that you've heard about for years through my videos. What do you tell yourself? Just tell me. Because I want to tell you, eh? it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road here. And I want to tell all, all the people who still, at this point, have no rhyme or rational reason. If you don't just write, join UNC or join PNM. Don't write that on my wall. Here what to do. Write on the wall what is a good reason. You can't tell me. PNM is criminals because Gary said Kamala is a criminal when Gary was eating rowley food. When Gary and Sinanan was getting their hair dyed by the same hairdresser, Gary didn't care who was crashing into Gandhi village round about. So I went down there and fight and fight until I had to get sponsors like, like Eddie, Edward Martinez from Trinity Lighting. And the people from the juice company to organize the barrels and Lutchman Ramroop who painted them and organized the stickers. I had to get people like them to create 16 barrels, lit barrels. We went and put them like a runway at the end of the highway to let people know that they, 
something was happening. Those orange barrels with those lights flashing would have told you, hey, slow down, something going on here. Nobody's seeing that and flying through. And when Rohan Senanan sent to pick it up, he also had to replace them with barrels of his own. And he had to move the signs that I showed that was hidden in the bush and put it in the center of the road, in the center of the grass verge between the two lanes, between the two carriageways. And even though he and his whole ministry of works didn't know what rumble strips were, they went and found out and came and installed it. And since Philip Edward Alexander did those things, and those videos are there, not one person has lost their lives. Not one mother had to wake up to bad news. Not one child had to lose their father or their mother. Not one person lost a sister or brother because we fixed it. And we didn't stop until it was fixed. Now it's not fixed permanently and it's not fixed perfectly, but nobody is dying. Like when I fought, when the UNC was in office and I fought for that dangerous dog act, it's not a perfect law. But since that law, all of the people that were dying from pit bull attacks, because pit bull breeding is a thing, they're dying. And you're not hearing that no more. And that's the purpose of what's happening on the 14th of August. You have a chance to vote into office a political party that is that committed to delivering to you. When people say, but you're only doing that to get elected, yes. That is what politicians are supposed to do. When I tell you to bring all of us on a stage, me, Gary, Kamala, Keith, anybody who wants a job, put all of us on a stage and ask us any question you want. Because we have to be able to defend our policies and our track record. And if we don't have a track record, we can tell you any policy that we want. You have to know it's not going to materialize. That is just an empty promise. That the only people who will serve you are the people who have been serving you. And the Progressive Empowerment Party, we have created a party of, of shadow MPs. Long before this local government election was even a dream, our shadow MPs were in your communities. All of you know, many of you have had to call me today. I, every single day, a woman called me and said, Mr. Alexander, I fear that I, I'm going to lose the job. And, and I, I'm going to talk to the union, but I don't know what they're going to do, but I know what you could do. And if you could promise me that I could just call you back and talk to you. I know you have an election. The, the woman, I told her, but of course, this is why we're here. We don't just want to get in the government. I want us to win local government elections so bad so we could prove to you how government works. Just so that we could prove to you that you could pick up the phone and you could call and you could make a report like the gentleman in Andalusia who I had to get him to promise on a video that he said PNM had fixed it and UNC had taken his call. I said, if I get it fixed, will you endorse us? And he said, yes. And in 24 hours, it was fixed. And we had to track him down and get him there. And he had to grudgingly admit because he said on the first video that he was PNN for life. But he had to grudgingly admit on a live video, Philip is the fix it man, that they respond. They get the job done. I want to tell you something, without holding public office, I commit, I, <laughs> I see they try all kind of bullshit. Let me tell you something. It's not just Wasser that responds to me. It's TN Tech. It's the Ministry of Works. The Ministry of Education. People have come to me with their problems. I don't try to deal with government ministers. I'm not clinking glass with them. But the public servants and the people, the functionaries who make these things work, they deal with me. I'm going to tell you a story. Everything I tell you, 
there is video footage in my archives. Just go and look. Our office at 14 to 17 Park Street in Port of Spain. And one day, some months ago, there were very high winds. And along the avenue by where Ice Factory, Power Gen, and La Perouse Cemetery is, where Avenue becomes Park Street, they have some old trees growing out of the pavement. And one of those trees blew down and blew straight across the road from one side of the pavement to the next. You couldn't pass. Happened at 20 past 2. And I'll never forget this. And people come to people come running to our office to say, hey, come and see this. So I went and I did a live video. And I did a live video to tell people. Because we know looking out of our office that those four lanes. Hundreds of thousands of people use that road on the afternoon. And we told people, listen, if you could get out of town early, because all the people that use here go in and get put either on Lady Young or on Wrightson Road, and it could be old man's. So I did that video to tell people that. Doing that video, a fire truck pulled up and cut up the tree. And the senior told me, we were sitting in the fire station and we saw it, we was watching your video. And we watched one another and we said, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna take care of it. And they came, not because somebody called them, not because somebody sent them, not even because it was their jobs, but because they were watching my video trying to solve a problem and they were moved to help solve the problem. They had the saws. And they had the manpower and they came and they cleared the road. By 3 o'clock, that road was open. It was open by 3 o'clock. There was nobody that I could have called as a citizen to say, hey, this tree is blocking this road that could have responded that way. One morning, I was leaving the West. I passed a lamppost just opposite West Mall, looking like a gun and fall, took a video, sent it to people in TNT. That afternoon, coming home, they were putting on the light bulb in the new pole they just put up. One night, I stopped and did a video. There's this thing called the bow tie by Kokorit. They close off one, and the one that they close off have things blocking it and they were all damaged and mash up and it was no longer a prevention and it was causing accidents. I did a video and I said this is going to kill people and the next day the Ministry of Works people came and they fixed it and that night 24 hours later I was able to go and do a video again under the Overpass where St. James crosses Kokori, where the water collects every time it rains and blocks the place and sends traffic out to Carnage. I went and I did a video one morning and I showed them that the drain exists, but it is not only is it blocked, the grass and the drain is higher than the road. There is a mountain that the water has to go over to get into the drain. Within hours, people were there cutting that fixing that. It affects permanently. The volume of water that collects there far exceeds that drain's ability, especially if it's high tide. But since that video, it has never, no bad rain enough ever to send traffic all the way to Carnage. I can sit down here tonight and tell you story after story after story of the things that I do and my family have gotten accustomed to uh, my phone ringing, somebody telling me something, I change in my clothes, jumping into my vehicle and heading on site to see if I could fix it or see if I could get it fixed. That's, that's what we want to do as local government. And we want to perform. You see, the PEP and our partners, the Reunited Farmers, we in 61 districts out of 141. We in 61. So we can't win the whole election. But we could win those 61. And if we win those 61, those 61 could deliver to such a high level 
that people would start comparing the performance of their where they live with everybody else in the country and they would see and they'll be able to tell other people listen this progressive empowerment party is not like the other parties this is not politics as usual these people actually know what government means that the well-being of the citizens is the function purpose and reason for government we invented that definition because there's no definition for it and we realized that if Trinidad was a rock in the sea, if it was just an island with no people on it, you'd not need government. You need government to manage the affairs of people. What affairs? Secure the country, secure the economy. Those are pretty much it. There are other things that government involved in, education, healthcare, the provision of those goods and services. Do a good job. Try and make sure that the people have the highest standard. Trinidad shouldn't have a St. Clair and a West Shore because we spend $5 billion a year on public health, but it is routinely and systematically stolen. It has made some people fantastically rich living in Goodwood Park and St. Clair and Fairways and living large lives of your money, of the poor. It's the largest payer of taxes in this country is the poor. And the poor people have made people fantabulously rich in the wealthy class China and Tobago and they and they have now doubled down and they invested in these political parties to fool you into making you believe that one of those two choices could ever be rational in a country where the government has failed for 62 plus years you have a progressive empowerment party that belongs to you you have a party whose policies are spot on to the point where the other two parties are stealing and you know copying our policies and trying to pass it off as their own you have a political party that has demonstrated a commitment to deliverance we were first responders. I watched in the media cover the UNC and PNM tussle down in Woodland, but it was a responded first with cleaning supplies, water, and food down there in the heavy rains this weekend. And we ain't got no coverage because we're not 1%. We ain't got no coverage because they framed this party bad. We ain't get no coverage because those who manipulate the affairs of state to, to their benefit, to their financial gain, are deathly afraid. Of the progressive empowerment party and philip edward alexander because they know two things will happen for sure that during the days of them glorifying themselves and gorging at the at the treasury trough would be over and that the people will no longer need all the fancy goods and services they sell in lieu of what the people are supposed to get naturally and normally i want to tell you if you think anything that i say made sense take a gamble you cannot lose it cannot get worse, regardless of whether it's an Indian or African serving you or me. It doesn't matter. It cannot get worse. The country, I want you to hear me, the country is broken. They have no plan. We have economic development plans that I will not share. I will not share it with them. I want them to collapse on themselves. Negotiate with Russia, negotiate with China, negotiate with America. Try and sell the people of this country. Try and sell them. Try and look for money as handouts and loans and soft loans from IDB and IADB. Try and make that your way of running the country. The Progressive Empowerment Party don't need those things. We'll disconnect ourselves from those fake treaties. We'll make Trinidad and Tobago a sovereign state again. And we'll, we'll, anyway, I can't, I can't even share that information. This is a courted nation One by one Let's do it together Let's make a change We want to see Standing strong To any weather Fall on the light of the PEP Cause we can build A better place For every queen And every race Together
Save TNT. Boat. PPP. And all housekeeping and telling that we need your help financially. We do not have deep pocket financiers. We do not get support from any of those contract mafia political speculators, nor do we want any help from them because we're making no promises to nobody other than a better country. If you would like to help us by making a donation of any kind, because it is the kindness of strangers and members and supporters that has gotten us this far, and we didn't come this far to only go this far. We need your help. And if you want a better Trey and Tobago, and you believe in me, and you believe in the work that we've been doing, and you believe that Trey and Tobago deserves a proper political government, a political movement, a form government disconnected from recycled politicians and the contract mafia, please reach out to Anna at 374-8744 or Felicia at 769-4590. Anna's number is 374-8744. Felicia's number is 769-4590. If you want to buy any of these pep shirts of any kind, reach out to Pat Jaikaran at 4805463. Satish and the team will put it up on the Facebook. I don't know if anybody does it on TikTok because it doesn't matter to TikTok because they don't save these lives. But the Facebook lives will be there and the number will be there. Polling agents. We need polling agents for election day. We are paying polling agents. If you would like to, to, to be hired as a polling agent on August 14, please reach out to Amanda at 778-0029 or Satish at 796-8172. If you want to be a caterer in your community and give us a good price for food, because we have to feed these people that we hire as polling agents, call Nicole at 737-0911. If you want to be a caterer, Call Nicole at 737-0911. Transport. If you want to help us with transport, yes, we will pay you for the transport. 778-0029 or 796-8172. And if you would just like to volunteer, if you just want to be a part of the party and help us on election day, you can call 796-8172 or 702-7445. I want to tell you, on the 5th, Saturday the 5th, we are having a massive public rally in Arima. Food, drinks, entertainment, security, parking, seating. Our rallies, you all know by now, you're hearing people telling you it's be lit, it's be vibes, it's be fun. If you want to be a part of this one, it's free, it's always free. Um, the 5th, we're in Arima, mark your calendar, and the 12th. On the 12th, we say thank you to Trinidad and Tobago for all of the experiences for all of this campaign. And we're going to be doing that one down in San Fernando. We were originally called it to do it at headquarters, but because Friday night we had that beautiful um event on arapita avenue movie town and st james that we said that we're gonna do our closing rally in san fernando so on the 12th we in san fernando i'm gonna give you some numbers you could call any of these numbers to tell to book your space to reserve space but it's free eh? but if you want to be involved in any way take any of these numbers 378 3748744 769-4590 Four eight zero five four six three seven seven eight zero zero two nine seven three seven zero nine one one seven nine six eight one seven two or seven zero two seven four four five. That's our team. You reach out to any of them. If you don't remember none of that, Phillips number six eight two twenty one ten. Send me a WhatsApp and I'll forward it to the right team to get you involved. Six eight two two one one zero has always been for the longest while my number and it's been public. Yeah? And I really wanted to use this opportunity tonight to tell you that for the rest of this, for the rest of this 13 days, I will be doing a live video every night at 9 o'clock. Every night. I'll be doing a live video. Um... I'm trying to do something and I apologize. Every night, I'll be doing a live video from 9 o'clock. So you can tune in, mark your calendar. We'll be on TikTok. We'll be on all the pages. On Facebook, we'll share it on WhatsApp. And I want you to know, and I want you to check, and I want you to check, call me out on this. Go back. I Today I was reading, Facebook was giving you memories. And I was reading my memories because I had to put out an Emancipation Day greeting. And every now and then Facebook was just telling me, this is your post from two years ago, three years ago. And I just stayed on the page. And it started to give me four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, up to 13 years ago. And on, on up to 13 years ago, 
my emancipation day message I kept as one came up I said I could reuse this one this one spot on I copy that I save it and then the next one came up this one spot on and I realized that the messages but what I want to tell you is all of my videos and all of my posts and everything there everything there well, don't take chain up with them telling you that I work with any political party five ministers and senior members of the PNM and me in court they want to silence me bad people that other people who play jumping jump out jumping stamp with political parties are very good friends with make no mistake make no mistake August 14th is a big opportunity for all of us as a country August 14th we get to say to the contract mafia, to the secret society, to the PLM and the UNC, to the racist cults, to people who believe that there is no chance for Trinidad to change, we get to show them that we can. 460,000 people, no, 650,000 people voted for the PLM and the UNC in the last general election in 2020. 650,000 people, give or take. That means there's an X 600,000 people, give or take, that are eligible to vote. We are just aiming at them. Now, I know that there are plenty PNM and UNC people are dissatisfied. Now, I want to tell you, come to the PEP. The Progressive Empowerment Party is not here to be your friend or your lover or, or, or your religion. We're not here to be a cult. We're just here to serve you in the background. We're here to become that hum, that noise that you know that is somebody taking care of it. When people have a bar, I see the PNU and see put out a thing today about noise. Noise pollution. Noise pollution today, 2023. You know a lot of people know me? A lot of people know me here in living in your house, trying to raise your family in a law-abiding manner, nine o'clock in the morning, gunman in your hole. That was an Indian arrival day morning when Richard Blaze called me to tell me, how come you are not responding to what is going on in Dago Martin? I said, I don't know what's going on in Dago Martin. I just woke up. And then I realized I have a set of messages. And there was a fet in Simeon Road. And I went and I had to find it. And when I find it, I called Gary Griffith. I said, these people mad. They're tormenting the people. Gary said, well, I might be the commissioner, but they have nothing I can do. And I call the EMA, and I tell the EMA, you have to come and put an end to this. You have to come and do a reading here. The EMA said, Mr. Alexander, we want to come, but we only have one meter, and it's in Sangre Grande. If I tell them to leave now, by the time they reach the party done, those people got <laughs> a license to have that fet until noon. And I did a live video and I stood up there trying. I tried. Like how I tried in Paria to get those fellas rescued from the pipes. Like how I tried that. I stood up and I fought and I tried to get some relief. Because people from all over the West, Tego Martin, Pitti Valley, I mean rich poor in between. They just beg, you know, God, just give us some reprieve. And when I realized by nine o'clock, there was nothing I could do. I'm walking back to my car and I hear this over the system. Gunman in she hole, she like that. Now I still lie, eh? still have the phone in my hand. I said, What? Gunman in she hole, she like that. Gunman in she hole, that's what I hear him. And I say, Madness, living in your house, trying to raise your family in a law abiding manner, nine o'clock in the morning. Gunman in your hole. That was me. That was an example of me fighting for. And there are people who in Woodbrook, I got a bar closed down, shut down on a side street, a fancy restaurant. And he and his friends, I mean, he, he actually ended up being somebody that considers me friend. He said, I didn't like you then, but I understand what you did. We got him shut down because I went. Somebody had invited me. What's it called? Ross, Rustins or Ro, something, something like that. And 
and they had invited me and I went and and I went into it as a pretty place you know I got a drink at the bar and then went out into the back on the back balcony whatever and I looked at the left and behind and the right and I saw people's bedroom windows I grew up in Woodbrook so I know Woodbrook house that's down in a Woodbrook house that's now a fat place jamming music and six feet to the wall, somebody's bedroom. Six feet to that wall, somebody's bedroom. Six feet to that wall, somebody's bedroom. And I thought, this can't be right. And I put down my drink and I left. And my friend was the head of their committee. And I told them, I said, y'all are mad. I cannot believe any organization of state gave this place a license to do that to those people and the people who live in those houses could tell you because it's my phone they used to call and I got it shut down and that's not the only one I got one shut down in Carnage I got one shut down in Rich Plain right by Rich Plain people would call me and tell me and they, and, and they would tell me that's just how it is that, that one in Carnage people could tell you all up in Glencoe, all up in, in Abu Puja, I don't think they tell you. This man would just pour these speakers on a long weekend. And the music does not stop for four days. Doesn't stop. We got it stopped. We got it stopped. Because we responded. There's a place called Daybreak Cafe in Pity Valley. Across the road from the local, the regional corporation that has built out beyond the pavement into the drain in the road and children and old people alike have to walk in the road the owner of daybreak sends to tell me all the time that he supports me even though he knows every morning when when groper man was chairman of the regional corporation every morning on a mile station i used to have a show on 104.7 every morning at eight o'clock in the morning I'd call the regional corporation to ask them what they're doing about Daybreak Cafe. And if you ever pass Daybreak Cafe and see what they've done, and I want to tell you, it's not that I don't like people or I don't like friends or I don't want to be one of those people that everybody know and love. All of the other people who are inconvenienced, when, when these people got stuck in this pipe, I did not know any of the family members who reach out to me. Just people tell them, you can't reach nobody in government, you can't reach nobody in opposition, call Philip. That day, I was in the fire station being threatened by the chief fire officer that he was going to call the police for me because I was there trying to find out where the money going if children had to die in a fire in Maraba, I was there fighting for that. We had to put that on hold to go and deal with Paria. Nobody picked it up in the government or the state. And a woman and her daughter just had to burn to death. Again, plenty of people burning to death in this country. How people die waiting for ambulances. Or how people die trying to get a doctor in our hospitals. Or how women die giving birth in San Fernando General Hospital. These things are inexplicable. They just allow to happen because you all have nobody to call. But you do. You have the Progressive Empowerment Party and a lot of you know that. A lot of people call me and say that I have a loved one on a stretcher. I have a loved one sitting on a chair outside the hospital. People say that I was harsh on the Point 14 Hospital. Hundreds of millions of dollars spent on the Point 14 Hospital and the air conditioner not working. And you have old people sitting on plastic chairs in the yard. So then what was the hundred millions for? And they say, I've been harsh on the people. Respect the guard job. Respect the manager job. Miss me with that bullshit. I want you to give me the job so that I can end all of that. I want you to give me the job so Trinidadians can have pride in themselves and demand treatment. And know that if they don't get the treatment, the government will step in. Give us that job. That's who I am. We are first responders to bridge collapse. We help farmers. That is why the reunited farmers paired up with us.
because they know that we fight for them. We help the communication workers from TSTT when the communication workers union abandoned them. We help them. Got them their money. You know we're beyond a shadow of a doubt. No bullshit. All the crap that the PNM and the UNC could try to tell you about me. The one thing they can't say is I don't deliver because the track record there. And we can run hours of video footage just for you to see that we respond when you call. That's what you want. That's what you need as government. Not your friends and people that look like you or a tribe that you're a part of that's not helping you. You need, as government, people that will be there when it matters. When you have a loved one dying in your hands and you can't get an ambulance like Lorraine Fouchette, who in the NTA, she couldn't get anybody in the government, even though she was the head of the NCC. She called me. She called me. You need to know that there are people when they hear that police outside your house, throwing your children shit in the road and kicking you out of your family home like they was doing to Errol Fabian. You need to know that there's somebody like Philip Edward Alexander who would get Wayne Rochard at FCB on the phone and tell Wayne, I want a meeting with the management of FCB. I want to help this man go down outside FCB on Maraval Road, do a live video, tell people, okay, let us put up money and pay off Errol Fabian loan and raise over a million dollars for Errol Fabian. You want to join that theater, you know? But you need to know that there's somebody who you could call. And I want you to know that that's who I am, regardless of which political persuasion you are. And to the people who know, they know, even Gary know, when you're in a jam, call Philip. They have government ministers. Herbert Volney and I were enemies. The man endorsed me before he died. Vernon Dilema is one of the most respected attorneys in this country's history endorsed me and the Progressive Empowerment Party. These people do that for a reason. These are good and decent people who want better. And they want better for you. And they want better for themselves. People who are in the waving gallery and they're on the way out of the departure lounge. If you want a better Trinidad and Tobago for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, there's only one choice. August 14th. August 14th. When I read these articles and I share these articles with people, what some of the things people go through in this country, I have a set of messages saved in my phone that I want to share with Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm going to do it next week, you know. I'm going to do it next week. And I'm going to let people hear the kind of everyday problems everyday people in Trinidad have. And that there is nobody for them to reach out to in government or opposition. But the Progressive Empowerment Party, Philip Edward Alexander. I didn't make up Philip will fix it. People was calling me and saying, I get your number from so and so. They say that you could fix it. They say that you will fix it. They say that you is the man to call. This is our truth tonight. If you want a better Trinidad to Bingo, start on August 14th. Show everybody that we are not afraid to stand up and fix it. All of the people who changed the world, the Mahatma Gandhi, the, Mo, the, 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 the Martin Luther King Jr., these people, they had lives, they had options. Ma Mahatma Gandhi was a lawyer. Martin Luther King Jr. was a preacher. These people could have had their own good lives and they decided to give it up to better other people. Those are the people we follow. Those are the examples we want to be linked to. 
there is no other political movement in this country that was started as a charity organization. We started serving the orphans, the homeless, and the disabled. It is because of Philip Edward Alexander there is handicapped parking in this country. It is I who got hand. Somebody just wrote Gandhi was racist though. Racist to who? Are you mad? When Gandhi became a lawyer, he didn't go home to India. He went Africa, South Africa to fight apartheid. Learn your stuff now, man. Anyway, going forward from here, Trinidad and Tobago. Give me a good reason why I should vote for you. Because you want a better country. And you could go and check the track records of the PNM, the UNC, Gary Griffith and me. All of us. Searchable. All of us. You could find it. Go and see who have been serving the people. Make your decisions there. Yeah? I gotta leave it there. Because it's running late. But every night, 9 o'clock on the dot. Even if I'm on the road, I start in this live video. I promise you, every night from tonight, 9 o'clock, we will be here. Until tomorrow. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.